talk about single, double, and triple bonds. And these are your building blocks of covalent compounds. So what is a single bond? It's also known as a sigma bond. Um, and so if you say sigma bond or single covalent bond or a single bond, they're all the same word. But one thing that I like to point out is that if you're talking about a sigma bond, it's one word and a single bond is one bond. So one word with one line go together. It's symbolized by the Greek letter um, sigma. So this little funky letter sigma, and it occurs when the electron pair is centered between two atoms. So if you have two S orbitals and that overlap, it's gonna center between the two orbitals. If you have two P orbitals, it could go end to end, or you can have an S and P overlap because what a sigma bond does is concentrate the electrons in a bonding orbital between two atoms. Okay, so we're gonna do a, um, a graphic organizer to talk about what this is. I, I think it's better than giving it all individually, but what does a single bond really look like? It's a covalent bond with which a single electron is shared per element. So if we look back at, at what we were doing with um, the rubber bands and we had fluorine with one electron and fluorine with one electron, one electron was shared per element for a total of two shared electrons. So a bonding pair is what that line was, it's a pair of shared electrons. So when we're looking at sigma bonds, you have to remember that the different electrons need different things. So column 15, so let's look at phosphorus trichloride, that's PCl3. Well, phosphorus, which is P, is in column 15. Column 15 has five valence electrons, which means it needs three more. It can't take two, it can't take one, it has to take three. Kind of like the similar rules as ionic bonding. It has to have what it has. Chlorine, on the other hand, only needs one. This is in column 17 and only needs one. So if you want to, if you have one that needs three and one that needs one, you can plug in more of the one that needs one make three. So there's three ones, so that gives it three to chlorine. That's how you kind of start thinking of the ratios that are going to happen. And there are set ratios or set things that need to happen that will help you figure out or students figure out how to bond. For looking at water, H2O, oxygen is in column 16, it needs two. Hydrogen only ever gives one, so there's going to be two bonds, one with each H. So multiple covalent bonds are when more than one electron is shared to attain noble gas formation. Let's take a look at this in forms of our diatomic molecules. So when we're looking at our diatomic molecules, it's, it's a nice way of looking um, at multiple covalent bonds in a very um, subset of, of atoms. So we're looking at fluorine gas, which is F. Two, and it's interesting because um, fluorine is in column 17. Column 17 has uh, seven valence electrons and it needs one more. So F2, that means there's two of them. So you can kind of start thinking of, okay, I have an F and I have an F. Okay, this F has six pairs that I'm going to write, and this F has six pairs I'm going to write. Each F needs one more, and each F has one kind of lonely pair. What you're going to do while I'm doing is thinking that this is going to make a sigma bond because it's one pair, but it's cool because by making this bond, this pair is going to bond right here, it's sharing those two electrons, so each fluorine gets to eight. This fluorine sharing one, this fluorine sharing one for a total of two in this bonded pair. Let's look at nitrogen. Nitrogen is in column 15. 
And we know by remembering back to our Lewis structures that it has one bonded pair. So we can draw those there, we can draw them on top, we can draw them on better, bottom, as long as the bottom bonded pair is not where you're putting your lone pairs. Now, we know that each nitrogen needs three more because it starts with five. So you can draw those three over here. And if you're wondering why you're drawing them over here, it's because you kind of have to line them up so that they can become a bonded pair. So this nitrogen forms a triple bond. See, one bond, two bond, three bond, triple bond. So you're gonna connect one pair. There's one bonded pair. There is a second bonded pair here and then a third bonded pair down here. And now it's a triple bond because each line shows two electrons being shared per nitrogen. So you can count two, four, six, eight. Oxygen is in your 16th column. There's two of them. So we're gonna bond two oxygens together out of column 16. And we know that column 16 has two pairs that we can't touch. Those two are bonded. You never touch a pair that's already been put together. So what we're gonna do now is we go, they each need two more because this, you're gonna put the two kind of lone electrons together. So these are two lone electrons, these are two lone electrons. So if this oxygen shares his two electrons with this oxygen, this oxygen will have eight. And if this oxygen shares their two electrons with this oxygen, this oxygen will have eight. By sharing electrons and then creating bonded pairs, each oxygen is able to get to noble gas formation. Now, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and hydrogen are all going to be single bonds, but for different re reasons. Chlorine, bromine, and iodine, we're going to mimic fluorine up here because they're all in column 17. And column 17 elements only need one. So you can kind of draw them all out to match fluorine, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna start doing that. Remember, you're gonna do all your dots because you always have to represent all your electrons. And you can, you can kind of see how it goes. Now, I'm not gonna do hydrogen yet because hydrogen is a different beast. Now, each one of these matches fluorine. So you gotta do the one on the inside. And then what you have to go back and do is do your, your bonded pair or your shared by connecting this electron to that electron. So what by that connection of the two electrons, you're, you're sharing them together. You're giving them a space to share. From this electron to this electron, you're giving them a space to share. From this electron to this electron, you're giving them a space to share. Now, hydrogen is slightly different because hydrogen's in column one. Column one only has one valence electron, um, but because hydrogen's not officially an alkali metal, it can either be give an electron or it can share an electron. Hydrogen is, um, is very special that way. And so when hydrogen is sharing, it, it looks like this. You have a hydrogen. Oh, that doesn't look, I'm sorry, guys. You have a hydrogen with a dot on the inside. You have a hydrogen with a dot on the inside. And then those two dots become a shared pair. And if you're looking for the electron the, the Lewis structures for the um, diatomic molecules, they're here. And this kind of shows a basic structure of Lewis structures and also bonding potentials and also why diatomic molecules work. This is a great diatomic molecule cheat sheet. Okay, so we were talking about how the diatomic molecules can make into different bonds. Here's just a different way of looking at them and then my drawings, but it still shows how everything 
oxygen because of double bond, nitrogen because of triple bond, hydrogen single, chlorine single, chlorine single, iodine single. It's just a different visualization if that will help. But let's really talk about multiple covalent bonds. So let's talk about a pi bond. A pi bond is added onto a sigma bond and it signifies parallel orbitals. So when you, when you start, you always start with a sigma bond. And then you're gonna add either one or two pi bonds in order to create a double or a single bond. Pi bonds are legitimately denoted by pi. So if you're thinking about a double covalent bond, it's going to have two lines and two words, sigma pi, two words, two bonds, double bond, three words, sigma pi pi, triple bond, three words. So sigma, one word, one bond, sigma pi, two words, two bonds, sigma pi pi, three words, three bonds. So let's look at how they, the multiple covalent bonds look. So if you're looking here on like where the overlaps are, that's where you're getting your bonds. So carbon to hydrogen, single bond, but the carbon to carbon, that's where you're getting a potential double bond or a pi bond. This is what it's looking like. It's getting the double overlaps here and here. So we may not have to draw these, but it's good to get a visualization of what the covalent bonds are going to look like. Um, if you're looking at how to draw them, here's your sigma bond. You've got a hydrogen and a hydrogen being added to oxygen. Carbon, where you're going to have your oxygen and your oxygen being added. You're going to get a double bond, and the nitrogen is going to be your triple bond. Um, let's now take a look at our um, bonding graphic organizer. Okay, let's talk about our bonding graphic organizer. So you're gonna take a sheet of paper and you're gonna fold it into fours. And primarily you're doing this because there's four columns, right? There's four main columns, we can make four squares. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna open it up. And it doesn't matter what corner you use, Pick a corner. I'm going to use this corner because I have um, the um, like shiny, heavy stuff over here and I can't write on it. So I'm going to just fold the flap of this corner down. It doesn't honestly matter what corner you use. Just have that flap folded down so you have four squares and a flap. Now, you don't have to, but I really like outlining my lines so that it becomes a true visual organizer. I'm just going to draw on. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to draw down here. Draw here. So now you have four squares. I'm going to give mine a second to dry. And we're going to label these as. Column 14, column 15, column 16, and column 17. And we're going to use this to organize our covalent bonding potential. So the first thing we have to think about is how many valence, of, and we're gonna valence electrons every element's going to need, or every column's going to need. For So column 14, so I'm gonna write VE for valence electrons. It has four valence electrons. Column 15, again, I'm gonna write VE for valence electrons. It has five valence electrons. Column 16, again, VE for valence electrons. It has six valence electrons in column 17. It has not eight valence electrons. Mrs. McGuire had a moment there. It has seven valence electrons. Now, 
what everything needs to get to is eight valence electrons. That's where that eight came from. I was thinking of the next step. Sorry, guys. So what column 14 needs is four. Column 15 needs three. Column 16 needs two. And column 17 needs one. And what's the cool thing is about how many it needs is how many different potential ways of getting there there are. So if column 14 needs four, there's actually four different ways that columns 14 can get there. So it doesn't matter which way they use, let's label one way. One way could be have four can have four sigma bonds. You can also have one. Sigma, and you're going to add that to a si one sigma pi pi. You can have two sigmas. And you can add that to a sigma pi, or you can have two sigma pi's. So you really can't mix and match the different ways, but each way can be used fully. So four different ways, four different ways. It needs four for four different ways. So one way is four sigma bonds. Or you can add a sigma bond to a sigma pi pi bond. You could do two sigma bonds and a sigma pi bond, or simply two sigma pi bonds. These are the four options for when bonding covalently column 14. Column 15 has five valence electrons, needs three. So there's three different ways of getting to column 15 or how they can bond. So the first way is three sigma bonds. The next way is one sigma. And a sigma pi. Or you could have a single sigma pi pi. Okay. Three, three different ways. Column 16 needs two has six. So there's two different ways. You could either do two sigma bonds. or a single sigma pi. And finally, column 17 needs one, the only one way of getting there, and that's a single sigma bond. If you're wondering why we have this up here, we're going to write hydrogen in it because hydrogen isn't part of any of these. And we're going to be reminded that hydrogen can only create one sigma bond. And it's always terminal. And in fact, we can write that down here. These are also always 
terminal. Um, and this is your covalent bonding cheat sheet for how e the potential of bonding for each column that creates covalent bonds.